Hi, this is Sunil Manji, Senior Principal Solution Architect at Elastic. Today I'll be discussing my perspective on what is augmented semantic search, also known as attention-driven results. And then I'll be demoing, essentially extending my previous video demonstration on using machine learning to do dynamic facets. Before we get into the details, let's at least talk about the search methodology within Elastic quickly. There's lexical search which is what some may call keyword search. Here, I call that precision-driven results. If I'm looking for a Ford F-150, I want the engine to return exactly that. However, if I'm asking the engine to return pickup truck, I want the engine to interpret my intention. And the intention is anything that's a pickup truck. There could be a Raptor, a Silverado, or a Tundra. And we use that semantic search. This is also known as vector search. However, if I want the engine to do both, a hybrid approach, which is essentially a blue pickup truck. So blue is highly precise. And the pickup truck is a piece where I wanted to determine my, or I wanted to interpret my intention. And in this scenario, what I call preci precise intention driven results, it will return blue pickup trucks. But again, it interpreted the pickup truck side of it, but it gave me only blue, which is incredibly important. So we live in the world of and, not in a world of or within Elastic. We recognize the different use cases that require different types of search capabilities. So in my previous demonstration, we did exactly this, right? We issued a search query, we did it with vector search, well, we did some similar, uh, similarity analysis, uh, and then we had the response augmented using an LLM model and we used a locally hosted LLM model and we tested that against uh, OpenAI to determine how relevancy is, is impacted. But what's interesting is that when I encountered a different use case, I was told, Sunil, this is great, but what if I'm asking in your previous scenario when we said blue pickup truck, what if I'm saying blue pickup truck in Texas? Now, the in Texas piece is generally a facet. And for those of you that are not familiar with facets, if you go to homedepot.com and you type in hammer, you will receive on the left-hand side, left pane, you'll see all the vendors. So you'll see Ryobi and Milwaukee and DeWald, all the vendors that Home Depot carries hammers for. And then you can filter on that. So if you're looking for Milwaukee, you filter on that. And that's essentially what a facet is. So in this scenario, we're saying we want to extend that search scenario. Don't keep it simple. I want to ask, I'm going to, in my query, I'm going to submit a facet. I'm going to say something like in Texas or in the date range. Now, vector search out of the box doesn't handle facets very well, right? It interprets result, but it's not going to go and do facets uh, unless you do some tuning and there's articles about how to tune it. But I find that there's, in my opinion, there's a better way of doing um, dynamic facets and that is using name entity recognition model. So within Elastic, when you issue a query, we should first determine, does the question include an entity that we're interested in? Location is one of them. And if it does in fact contain a location, I want to inject that into the query, the vector search query, and then I'm going to augment it. So that's what we've changed as a demonstration is that we've introduced a name entity recognition model. It's all hosted within Elastic and we'll see the difference of how this impacts and how we're able to use dynamic facets. Now, before we get into the demo, I wanted to at least show how name entity recognition model works within Elastic. So we're in DevTools here. I'm going to type in, this is, I'm going to type in a sentence. It is a very hot day in Houston. And here I'm going to say, hey, go and run this name entity model. I have chosen this particular model and I'll go ahead and run. It says, hey, uh, based on your input, we've determined that Houston is a location. So I want to use this. And that's essentially what the demo will be is I'm going to issue a query and we'll determine if a location is within a query and then inject that into vector search query. Now all the code for my demo is available on my GitHub page, Sunil Man Elastic Tariff Demo. So let's take a look at the demo now. So in the previous example, I ran vector search and did queries like this. What are the shipping rates for propane? We're using vector search. And 
This returns highly accurate results. Everything is great. But remember, I encountered a scenario where they said, well, this is simple. What if I want to do something like, uh, and it did return results, and you can see the state here, the state is Texas. However, what if I was saying in Kansas, right? I want to run the same query. Now, again, this is going back to that previous uh, slide I had where I said, hey, blue pickup truck. But instead, now I'm asking Blue to pick up truck in Texas. And in this scenario, you can see the vector search tried its best, found documents that may have contained Kansas, but really didn't do the facets. It, it may have found uh, Kansas within the document, but again, you can see here, state of Texas popped up within, within the query. And that's not what I'm looking for. So in, in this scenario, I said, well, what if I include a name entity recognition model first, where as the query is issued, I am going to determine if a location is within the query. And if the location is within the query, I'm going to inject that location within the vector search query. Okay? And in this scenario, let's run this again. Let's go and issue this query. So again, in this particular scenario, I'm using OpenAI. It doesn't really matter about the, the LLM model. What really matters here in, in this scenario is I injected the NER and it determined if the location. So let's see if that works. So what are the shipping rates for propane in Kansas? And you can see that in fact, it did return the result I was looking for. So typically what happens is on your left-hand side, like Home Depot, you'd see Kansas and Texas and and you can auto facet. But here, what we're saying is we want the dynamic facet to be uh, to be instrumented at query time, right? I want you to, to determine the, if I have any location facets. And if I do at query time, go and instrument that within the query itself. And that's essentially what we have done. So what did we talk about today? We talked about the basics of what type of augmented semantic search, where you have lexical search, you have semantic search, and then you have hybrid search. We talked about the different examples of when precision and intention or, or the hybrid matters. Then we went into the demonstration where we saw that vector search is great, but once we start to add facets, like for example, what are the shipping rates for propane? It works great. However, once we add a facet to that query, like in Kansas, that's when it fails, right? So that's where Elasticsearch really shines, where we're able to inject a name entity recognition model to go and inject a dynamic facet. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed.